The following is a production of the University of Minnesota. Hi, this is Jeff Hahn speaking to you from the St. Paul campus. I am in the entomology department and today we're going to talk about forest and caterpillars, also sometimes called army worms. And forest and caterpillars is a common insect really found throughout most of Minnesota. This is an insect that uh, hatches as a caterpillar uh, in the springtime, so sometime in May, and it feeds uh, into June. It is an insect that is about two inches in size, uh, a lot of blue and some black, but really stands out when we're identifying this insect is that it has these footprint shaped spots, white spots on uh, the top of its back. And that's a really good way to identify for a scent caterpillar. Now, despite its name, it does not make a conspicuous webbing or tent, unlike its close cousin, the Eastern tent caterpillar, which makes those big webbings and fruit trees uh, in the fork of the branches. Forest sand caterpillars actually do make some silk, but it's usually early uh, when the caterpillars first hatch and it doesn't last very long. So you're pretty unlikely ever to see any kind of uh, webbing that forest sand caterpillars make. Now forest sand caterpillars will feed on a wide variety of different plants. If you are in the northern part of Minnesota, they particularly like birch and aspen. If you're in the uh, kind of the southern part of the state, the Twin Cities, you're going to find them on uh, oak and linden pretty commonly. But the reality is they will feed on many, many other deciduous uh, hardwood trees, as well as a lot of um, uh, herbaceous plants. Now, forest and caterpillars uh, is an insect that is cyclical in nature. And what we mean by that is uh, it will go through periods of time where they have very few, and the numbers will go very high, and we'll have some very large uh, outbreak numbers, and then the numbers basically will go back down and we won't see them again for maybe eight to 13 years. And so interestingly, uh, the last time we had really uh, high outbreak numbers was in the early 2000s. Now, their numbers have been steadily increasing over the last uh, couple of years. Now, in 2013, uh, and maybe it's because of the kind of the weird spring weather we had, but we didn't really see a lot of forest and caterpillars. And so we've maybe got a bit of a, a reprieve, but I would expect that we'll continue to see their numbers increase uh, as we move forward. Now, this is an insect that we can find in urban areas, as well as in wooded areas, uh, woodlot areas, forested areas. And so no matter where you are, there's a good chance you're going to see forest and caterpillars. Now, they have the ability to completely defoliate trees uh, when they're numerous. Now, a healthy, uh, well-established uh, tree can actually tolerate a lot of feeding. Sometimes people get the impression because they have a few caterpillars that the tree is doomed. And of course, that's not true. Uh, the tree, if it's doing well, can actually tolerate two, three, maybe even four years of very serious defoliation. And when you start getting past that four or five year period of time, uh, then the growth can slow down and eventually you can get some injury and damage uh, to the tree. Now, of course, this is healthy, mature trees. If we are talking about young, rec recently transplanted trees, then their tolerance is going to be much, much lower. And I would uh, be much more concerned if the tree is uh, severely defoliated. And I would actually take uh, whatever uh, efforts I could to prevent that from occurring. So if you run into a forest and caterpillar situation, you do have to consider, um, you know, the size of the tree, you know, how many are in the tree, uh, at what point do you find the caterpillars. So typically the best time to treat, if you find that desirable, is when the caterpillars are half their full grown size uh, or less. So we're talking about an inch or smaller. And ideally the tree should have at least 50% of its leaves. If the caterpillar is larger and uh, if you have uh, you know, less than 50% uh, of the leaves, um, then you're not really saving much on the tree. And that's really our goal is protecting the plant, not so much killing uh, the caterpillars. Now, of course, we also do have the consequence that as the caterpillars are feeding and as they uh, start to finish uh, with what they're doing, they do have a tendency to come down the tree and then move off. And that is where they get their other nickname, army worm. And so they're not a problem to the tree anymore, but they can be uh, a nuisance, especially if you're in an urban or suburban area. And they, um, 
uh, can cause damage to additional plants, as well as get onto people's homes and other, uh, other pieces of property and uh, are, are just a nuisance, especially when they pupate, and uh, just uh, issues that uh, people you know, will try anything to try to avoid. Mm -hmm.